G'day everyone, you are watching the Sydney City Space Logs. We're coming to you live with a round four match between Morgan and Evil Houdini uh, from the current episode two TTS season Shatterpoint League. So um, it's just me in the commentary box today, uh, but we're going to have a very, very good time. Uh, this is going to be a really, really cool matchup. Uh, the players are just currently rolling for priority. So we'll just see who wins that because it does matter now that we've got um, two different missions, which is really cool. And we'll jump into the opponent's rosters uh, after that. Uh, looks like there is a little bit of an issue with the dice tray, however. Here we go. So Morgan with two hits, one crit. Uh, looks like Morgan will be uh, first player and will also have the choice of the mission pack. Um, okay, so let's just dive into the rosters while we are looking. Um, essentially, uh, we've got Morgan with his tried and true uh, Darth Vader, Jango Fett, Arf clone trooper roster uh, alongside... Oh, we're not with Count Dooku. I am so sorry. Let me just fix up these in a moment. Bear with. I'll just get rid of the strike teams, actually. Yeah, okay. So basically, we have uh, Morgan with his tried and true Darth Vader, Jango Fett, and Arf clone troopers, uh, alongside Lord Maul, Obi-Wan, Kenobi out of hiding, and the Mandalorian super commandos. This is a really good roster. Um, Vader has some incredible synergy with Jango Fett, with Lord Maul, and of course, with Obi-Wan out of hiding um, because of all the heals on their tree. Jango Fett, of course, gets heals if he wounds a primary and a secondary character. And then, of course, there's some extra synergy there with Darth Vader being a Galactic Republic character uh, and being able to receive coordinated fire from the clone troopers, the ARF clone troopers. And, of course, they will be adding an expose um, before Darth Vader uh, does an attack. So let's jump over to see what U Evil Houdini has. Um, he has a really cool Separatist roster here with a little bit of a Cad Bane splash. We've got uh, Count Dooku, Separatist leader, alongside Kraken and the Magna Guard. Uh, and in the other side, he's got Cad Bane, Kalani, Super Tactical Droid, and B2 Battle Droids. So this is going to be a really great lots of movement style roster, I believe. Uh, so we're probably seeing a lot of triggers and tricks happening. Uh, and Morgan will, you know, to try and get around those. Um, I would say probably be prioritizing uh, Evil Houdini's um, supporting characters here. So probably going to be prioritizing the Magna Guard and the B2 Battle Droids to prevent them scoring objectives outside of their action um, with all the extra movement uh, that can be um, utilized here. So of course we have had Morgan win the priority as I said before um, and we have uh, had him choose the Sabotage Showdown mission. So that is the new mission. Uh, Evil Houdini did bring the Shifting Priorities mission pack. Um, so there was a, a cool little choice uh, and that is very interesting to see. So the first drop, we've seen uh, Darth Vader um, by Morgan uh, alongside Jango Fett and his ARF troopers. And then I think smartly, we've had a counted drop by Evil Houdini being Count Dooku, Kraken and the Magna Guard. Now, the reason I say that that is a good thing uh, is because Dooku, of course, does have uh, some really good defensive tech. He is probably one of the most tanky primary characters, and that really switches off a lot of Darth Vader's capacity to wound him in one shot, uh, even with the ARF troopers in support there. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because Count Dooku can use an ability called Surely You Can Do Better. So even if he is exposed, he can still spend force uh, between one and three force to change strike results to fail results, which is really, really handy for preventing Darth Vader from, of course, getting those those pesky one shots. And then, of course, he does have also very tanky supporting cast members here. So he's got Kraken, who's usually going to be having protection and steadfast. And of course, a 10 health Magna Guard supporting character as well. So really, really good um, counter there. And it's nice that uh, Evil Houdini's identified that. And then we've also got uh, Darth Maul on this side, or I should say Lord Maul at this stage. This is after he's been chopped through the belly and he's no longer working for Emperor Palpatine. Uh, and then to counter that, we've got Cad Bane and Kalani and the B2 battle droids. So this is going to be a really, really good um, match here, I think. Uh, you know, Morgan's going to have to prioritize. I, I don't want to say have to, but I would say Morgan will be prioritizing a few things. He's going to be prioritizing the B2 battle droids and the Magna Guard. And he's going to be making sure that Cad Bane is often uh, engaged because that is going to switch off a lot of Cad Bane's tech. So basically... For anyone watching uh, who's inexperienced with Cad Bane or would like a little bit of Cad Bane tech, 
basically, if the Cad Bane character is not engaged, then he can start spending force to either add damage or jump towards the target character. So we'll probably see a little bit of that. Um, he is really, really powerful if he gets left unchecked, uh, but he has a, a handy sort of switch off mechanic that his opponent can utilize. And that's probably what you'd expect for a nine squad point primary. You're not expecting them to be, um, you know, sort of capable of doing everything, uh, but it's still going to be a really cool little uh, watch here, I'd say. Let me just turn off my overlay buttons. Bear with me. No, it's not working today. Let's just ignore it. Okay, so who have we drawn first? We've drawn the OB2 out of hiding card for... Um, for Morgan, we don't have a mission card in the center yet, unfortunately, so I'm not entirely sure uh, what exact mission we've got in terms of the Shatterpoint play. Um, but of course, um, shifting priorities is always this one type of uh, deployment in the first struggle. So nothing surprising there. It's only what is going to be triggered off the Shatterpoint there. I'm not entirely sure what's happening with the mod, but there seems to be a little bit of... Um, a little bit of issue. We've got a couple of strange buttons showing up and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if I've got all of the information, um, but yeah, we have pulled Obi-Wan Kenobi out of fighting, which is really, really good um, first trigger there. So essentially what Morgan's done is triggered run on himself because you can always trigger run on Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding. So he would have done a heal and then a reposition. Uh, then he's taken cover and done a climb action to take this objective up the top. So it will be a capture three for Morgan. Um, Morgan will also end up with a hunker token on Obi-Wan Kenobi, making him really, really quite uh, durable there, which is good. And we will see how evil Houdini responds. Um, so yeah, there's no maul, so there's no displacement. There's no Django, so there's no displacement. So there's gonna be a lot of out of activation attacks here, I would say. We've got Ragen1 saying cool in the chat. G'day Ragen, it's nice to see you as always. Uh, so we've pulled the Magna Guard here, we've put them in reserve and we have drawn Cad Bane. So Cad Bane is not a bad pull initially. You can get him into position to start adding some damage into the midfield uh, as we see with his no one gets between me and my job ability. Um, so he's gonna come up, probably have a little bit of a snipe at Obi-Wan, see if Morgan wants to avoid the damage with Jedi mind trick or if he would like to just take it. There's also the option for um, Cad Bane to also use I'll take on uh, sorry uh, how about you step aside on to uh, Obi-Wan but that won't you basically lose half of the utility there because essentially if Obi-Wan remains on the objective they gain an expose and a strain uh, but of course Obi-Wan out of hiding is immune to expose because you can't expose someone that is uh, revealing themselves to the dark side forces of the Empire um, so I can't see the force on Evil Houdini's side either. I'm sorry, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, um, but we'll try and make do. Um, it doesn't look like Morgan. Yeah, okay, so we have indeed had a how about you step aside trigger, um, which has put an, uh, a strain in and expose on Obi-Wan. Um, Obi-Wan has then taken two, sorry, three damage after being targeted by Cad Bane's attack to use Jedi Mind Trick. Um, so he's essentially turned off that ability, uh, which will mean that there's no way that Cad Bane can take the objective off Morgan, which will make it easy for Morgan to potentially score four points next turn um, to Evil Houdini's two this turn. So that's a, a good play. Um, really, really making sure that uh, uh, Evil Houdini doesn't um, take the objective uh, off of um, off of Morgan there, and we will see who we pull next. Okay, so we're just still positioning the um, the Cad Bane character here and we are activating Django. So that's a really good uh, activation, I'd say. You probably don't want to put him in reserve just in case you draw one of your big beaters like Maul or Vader at this stage. So I'd say we're probably just going to have um, uh, Django going up onto the points and taking it, maybe taking some hunkers and not spending any force. And that is indeed what it looks like we're doing. So we're doing a... Um, What's the ability called? My client is getting impatient. So he does a focus action and a jump, which is great. He's then going to do an advance. It's gonna be a fairly um, uh, force uh, uh, light turn. Um, not gonna be taking any hunkers or anything like that and just getting on the point. And that is a big swing, already scoring four for Morgan. Um, so you can th thank uh, the mind trick off of Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, for doing that. And of course, um, it's not gonna be very easy for Evil Houdini to engage Obi-Wan 
Kenobi up here because of the position of this ingress point and where Melgan's placed himself, uh, especially considering that there's no out of activation displacement for Evil Houdini. So that's going to be a tricky guy to remove, especially considering that he's got Jedi mind trick, etc. So we've had Evil Houdini um, pull the Shatterpoint card. Usually when you've got a roster like this, you know, you're probably using Cad Bane or Kalani um, because Kalani is able to basically get all of the supporting character droids off the starting line. I'll bring that ability up now. So that is called Roger Roger. At the start of this unit's activation, each allied battle droid supporting character within four of a character in this unit may do a dash. So that's essentially uh, what we're probably going to be triggering now. Um, and that indeed is what we're triggering. Yep. So Kalani is a really good uh, shadow point target there. Um, she's a really good one to initially pull um, off the shadow point or even an early activation. And then late game, you start pivoting towards Kraken uh, or some of your big beaters. And that is because, um, you know, you usually lose that range for bubble from Kalani over time. So we're probably going to have a shot into Obi-Wan Kenobi here, um, trying to just put some extra damage there. If we do get the wound on Obi-Wan Kenobi, we can, of course, um, take the objective because I believe Cad Bane will be within two albeit not on the right elevation and we've got a lot of opportunity here to trigger things like tactical network um, and and wound um, Obi-Wan Kenobi out of active action uh, out of activation which will be a really really good uh, thing to do get a little wound on him early um, it does make Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding a little bit stronger thanks to the last stand of the Jedi which is just such a cool um uh, name for a ability um, so it says for each injured token this unit has characters in this unit add two dice to their attack and defense rolls so the more injured obi-wan gets the more powerful he gets which is quite fitting uh, and we'll see what we're doing so we're rolling some dice into um, obi-wan kenobi so he has blocked uh, well, it looks like he's got four expertise there um, I'm not sure what's going on with the dice trays here there is a reset button on the side here for anyone watching. So in the future, if this ever happens to you guys, you can hit reset and see if that changes anything. Um, but yeah, we've got one, two, three expertise, and that'll be five blocks for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, and we've got the Kalani special. So this will be two strikes and uh, four, sorry, two crits and four strikes into Obi-Wan Kenobi. So it'll just be the two crits going through, which won't be enough to trigger the free tactical network, meaning that we will have to spend some force for it. But let's bring up what we can do here. For some reason I can't make these big either. Uh, okay, so we can do three damage and a shove, which is really good. And then we'll probably do one force for a tactical network, uh, which will probably force Obi-Wan Kenobi to do, the, um, uh, to do the mind trick. And I think we've already spent force for that actually. So he's just mind tricked the tactical network, meaning that um, we won't have Evil Houdini being able to do another attack into them. Um, so two activations in and Morgan is down to three force, uh, but he's holding on to these objectives, which is going to make for probably a quick struggle to uh, one into a, uh, a fairly uh, tight struggle two. And if we can maintain control of all of these uh, abilities here, then um, we're looking like uh, Morgan's in the driver's seat for this uh, struggle. So we've pulled Darth Vader. Uh, we've gone with Darth Vader. Um, decided not to put him in reserve, probably because we want to hang on to a little bit of that force for the future. And we're just going to hunker down on this objective here. Now, the reason that the push is important here, guys, is because we are now going to be able to utilize this ingress point um, to try and get up there uh, and keep um, the pressure onto Obi-Wan Kenobi. But there is always the risk of Darth Maul just activating and coming in and causing major havoc as well. So yeah, it's going to be a really interesting uh, topic top sort of end struggle here. Um, we, I believe, did not add any uh, damage from the Cad Bane ability here. We would have been able to get Cad uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi up to uh, eight health, actually. We probably would have been able to just uh, wound Obi-Wan Kenobi and then done some force refresh with Cad Bane there. So it's unfortunate that we didn't do that unless I've missed the trigger. Maybe there wasn't enough force to do so, um, but that would have been a guaranteed wound. Um, refresh some force, gotten you that objective point and maybe um, flip some things around in your favor because we definitely got three damage off of um, the Kalani combat tree. So interesting that we didn't trigger that. So let's see what we've got next. Maybe Evil Houdini wants to save that for a big swing turn. Um, maybe he'd like to uh, score as many points as possible here. Um, 
but I don't know how we do that. We could probably put some pressure. We've drawn the B2s. We could probably put some pressure onto Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, okay, so we're just rolling some dice into Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's the two damage off the expertise tree that we need to just straight wound Obi-Wan um, because the B2 battle droids, of course, do get two damage from two expertise. So no matter what we roll here, we are going to be able to take the point and wound Obi-Wan, which is good. Um, and we'll see what else happens. We've got, I believe, let's see how many, how many successes did we get? Uh, we've got two, uh, we had three successes. So two, uh, sorry, three blocks on Obi-Wan. So two successes on the B2 battle droids, which is just gonna be uh, a shove essentially, uh, which is going to try and get Obi-Wan Kenobi out of the fight here a little bit and make his Jedi mind trick a little bit harder to trigger. And of course, now that, um, uh, Morgan only has two force remaining. There's no opportunity for a Jedi mind trick unless we get some force regen or uh, we refresh our deck in the next struggle. So we don't have to worry about Obi-Wan Kenobi for now because he's wounded uh, and we can see where we end up first. Um, so I think we might have wanted to do a move action first just to extend the range of the B2 battle droids um, sort of threat, uh, but we haven't done that. Um, and now we will have a wasted sort of uh, action on this B2 battle droid down here. He won't have a target, um, but we are going to use a climb action now to uh, potentially, um, you know, make it a little bit harder for this, uh, this ingress point or this this um, sort of objective here to be utilized by Morgan. I'm gonna try and sort of clog up the lanes there. And we are of course going to try and start putting some pressure on the middle objective here just to make sure that we can extend our coverage. Uh, because remember, there is a 66% chance that the middle objective is active in struggle two. Um, and that's sort of what you wanna start planning towards, I would say, um, if uh, if we anticipate that this is gonna be a quick struggle. So this will be a three point swing back for Evil Houdini, which will gain him a momentum because it will still be on Morgan's side of the struggle tracker. Uh, and we'll see how Morgan responds to this. There are a few things we can do um, to get there. I think Maul is a really good pull here. He can just walk up, uh, he can, there is no place to run this B2 battle droid to take them off of this objective. Uh, and uh, sort of reclaim that objective by um, getting Lord Maul to climb or use the ingress point on the other side of the building here um, to take it back. So we'll see what we draw. It is Darth Maul, and I, I, I would say that that is exactly the play that we go for here. So we take a damage um, to force speed, which is going to allow us to do a climb action um, for our actual move. Um, and, uh, you know, assuming that we don't actually engage the B2 battle droids because you can't climb whilst you're engaged. Uh, but that is a really good play here. You might even be able to do um, uh, a swing into him. If you get two successes on Maul's um, combat tree here, you do end up with a reposition. So you could do a swing, a reposition, and then a shove. Oh, sorry, and then a climb or, or using the ingress point. Um, so that was the force speed, as we said, guys. Maul has taken damage instead of used the force as his, his ability. And then we're going to be pulling these B2 battle droids off the point with there is no place to run and they will also receive an expose. Uh, and that is essentially a really good play. And that's probably gonna get this point back for Morgan. He's gonna pull them down. He's gonna roll seven dice into these B2 battle droids. He'll probably, probably get a reposition. And then he can use his second action to actually climb up on this point. And Maul is an absolute bad lad. I love to see it. Um, so yeah, undoubtedly going to be um, attacking into the uh, B2 battle droids. We've also taken two damage from Vader. So we're gonna be rolling a motta of 10 dice into an exposed B2 battle droid unit. And here we go. So it's a, a good roll. I believe uh, we've ended up with um, four expertise on Maul. I don't actually know what that does. Four expertise is two crits and two flat damage. So we're going to end up with um, two, three, three criticals and one strike. So four net successes, which is really good. Uh, it will be a wounded B2 battle droid unit and we'll see what we can do. Four successes uh, is of course the magical heal number there. Um, we're probably just gonna reposition. We'll put some, maybe some pins on the, um, uh, the B2 battle droids there to make their out of activation movement a little bit more tricky to utilize. Um, and we'll also heal two off of more, which is really good. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight, Eight damage so they actually won't be wounded uh, because they do have protection but they'll have one wound remaining which will make them an easy pickup for the uh, next struggle which is good uh, we will take this point back though and Morgan will be sitting uh, nicely on the uh, 
five point of his um, struggle tracker, which will be really good. And we will see, yeah, there we go. There's the, the move uh, after the reposition and shoving, etc., to place him back up on the point. Uh, so a really good play from Darth Maul. He's the ultimate sort of playmaker for a primary, a little bit fragile uh, sometimes, but um, you know he just can do basically everything that you want a primary to do. And the balancing act, of course, is that he only has the two health. Uh, so he can only get wounded twice before he's removed from the board after his third activation. So we will see how Evil Houdini responds. Let's have a think. So the optimal play here is probably just to keep going on this right hand side. Uh, there's not much he can, uh, Evil Houdini can do uh, to influence this side because we've got two characters sitting on the uh, objective here and Evil Houdini has no way of uh, doing diceless displacement. Um, so that will be interesting. Um, we'll want to know how he decides to make do. He can do a lot of those out of activation abilities though, as I said. So, you know, you can activate Kraken um, and you can maybe even move the B2 battle droids or something similar um, into a position where they might be able to get a single shove on either Darth Vader or the Bounty Hunter being Jango Fett. Um, and, you know, that is, a, that is a potential play. So we could see um, a Kraken pull here, a, a, a do not let them escape trigger to get these B2 battle droids up a little bit closer the first one under the bridge here will clear the pin this one will move a little bit closer uh, and we could see you know kraken get some pushes and maybe a lucky b2 battle droid getting a push through um, but it doesn't seem like we've pulled kraken we've pulled dooku and we have no agency over that either uh, simply because we've got the magna guard in reserve um, so we've pulled dooku we're going to um, dash up um, who did we dash we I don't think we actually used Dooku's ability here. Uh, there is a trigger to use Leader of the Separatist Army, but it doesn't look like we've actually used that. Um, so we've just used um, Dooku to move, and then because of protection protocols, we've moved up the Magna Guard as well. Um, and we're going to chuck some lightning, it seems, into Darth Vader. And I would say that we're probably going to get ready for a struggle too, uh, because uh, there's not enough points for Evil Houdini to take back from Morgan this turn to prevent it going into a struggle too. So that is interesting. Um, we're going to chuck some lightning into Darth Vader, it seems. Uh, we've got a pretty good roll there. We've got um, three strikes and four expertise. What, what does that mean on Count Dooku? Four expertise on his ranged is two crits and a damage. That's quite nice. So two crits um, and three strikes uh, into um, probably a block uh, of those strikes. So it'll just be the two crits going through, uh, which of course can either be uh, two, three damage, four damage and a disarm, or three damage and two heals. I would say that we'd probably want to go for the disarm on the big Darth Vader, uh, and that is indeed what we've done. So we've gone for the disarm, as you can see in the top left hand side there. Um, that will score two points for Evil Houdini, and no matter what Morgan does, uh, he will be claiming struggle number two. So a couple of tricks for struggle number two. Um, it's either divided into the right hand side, you can follow my ignore me hand there, uh, here uh, or this way um, and I actually can't remember the third deployment map there I believe it might be something to do with the sides um, so uh, yeah it's it's basically you really want to claim the middle objective that's active in two of the three um, missions uh, and you really like the sides in all of the sabotage showdown packs as well so i believe um, one of them is also activating both of the side objectives um, but you want to prioritize getting both of your um, your back points covered as well so I, I would say that morgan is looking to get a wound on these b2 battle droids to prevent uh, a flip and an automatic claim of this objective here in the next struggle so we'll see what we end up doing. We've got the yeah, we've got the Mandalorian Super Commandos going. They're going to have a swing into the B2 Battle Droids down there. Almost guaranteed to wound them here. Uh, they've only got one wound remaining, or one health remaining, I should say. Uh, and yeah, there are the crits. So it's going to be two crits, uh, uh, and that's it. Two strikes going into the B2 Battle Droids here, uh, and that will be three damage down to two, I believe, with the, super, the Mandalorian Super Commandos. Let's have a look. Yeah, three damage uh, down to two uh, and either a disarm or a strain. You probably want to put the disarm on the B2 battle droids to prevent all of their out of activation movement. Uh, and let's see, that is indeed what we've done. So they are now pinned, strained and wounded. Uh, and that is a really good way of shutting down um, the automatic claim of this objective back here. Because I don't think 
Kalani will be in range. Um, so, yeah, props to uh, props to a quick struggle here. Uh, we'll see how uh, Evil Houdini tries to maintain control in struggle number two, and we've had a shot into um, Kalani as well uh, at ranged, um, who is going to be taking uh, two two strikes or two successes into him, I guess. So that'll either be uh, a strain or uh, a disarm and three damage. Uh, and we've gone for the disarm there as well. Okay, and that is the second struggle done in 19 minutes. 19 minutes struggle one, that's, uh, that's pretty quick. And we'll see what we pull for struggle number two. Um, I don't believe I'm gonna be able to see these. These seem to just be um, mysteriously disappearing for me, but we'll see if anything pops up. All right, here we go. So the objective is we need more time. So this is the uh, yeah the left or right. Uh, and of course, uh, Evil Houdini will have the option to pick. Um, so he'll undoubtedly choose uh, this side, I would say. Um, so he can claim it with Dooku. Uh, he'll have to deal with the middle objective there and um, the back objective. But it will be quite the battle, uh, I think. Uh, what's the Shatterpoint ability on this as well? we've got press forward. So uh, when you pick an activation um, uh, with the shatter point, uh, every person in that unit will be able to do a dash. Uh, so that's quite strong. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we draw? We probably don't wanna pull the Magni Guards here. Um, I would say that we're looking for, you know, those Kraken activations or um, who else do we have? Yeah, it's probably Kraken, uh, maybe Cad Bane um, to try and force um, some abilities off of this center point. Um, Kraken's good to clear the center point here now that we've flipped that as the priority. So we could get three points scored for Evil Houdini. And I'd say that is the uh, what he's hoping for. It is Kalani. Um, that's uh, it's not as good um, because of the fact that um, Kalani is disarmed, uh, which really hurts because Kalani has an absolutely incredible uh, expertise tree here. Um, so two expertise is one crit and two strikes, which is really, really strong. And that is really good into the Mandalorian Super Commanders as well, considering they don't have the best ranged defenses. Um, yeah, so we'll see how we mitigate this. Uh, we've got disarms on all of the sort of droid characters in play over here, which is going to hurt, um, especially considering that, you know, you can get some free tactical networks, etc. But we are going to be able to trigger the uh, Roger Roger to clear some pins and get some B2 battle droids into the action. So we will see how we go here. Um, I would say, yeah, we're just obviously clearing the pins from the B2 battle droids. Um, he could also use a tactical network preemptively um, to maybe clear one of the conditions, but then he won't get the five dice attack uh, on the B2 battle droids with tactical network. So I think what we have to do is just essentially um, move with Roger Roger. I would say we probably take cover or just recover um, with um, Kalani. So the, uh, you know, the, 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 the really nice ranged expertise is online and we just do a five dice shot into, sorry, an eight dice shot into the Mandalorian Super Commandos um, hoping for, what is it? Hoping for two successes to get the shove off. And I, I think that will probably be what we do. Unfortunately though, I don't know if we're going to be able to uh, obtain or, or get control of this objective thanks to the B2 battle droids being wounded. And that's a really, really good way of, of course, um, you know, trying to deal with these um, these droids, all of these droid out of activation movements and attacks. If you can put disarms on them and you can wound them, then the propensity or the, the capacity to score points is dr drastically reduced. So that's a really good play there from Morgan, just putting a lot of pressure on. So I'll be interested to see. It looks like we have had a recover action um, into Kalani. Um, we were having a measure for Cad Bane, so he's not gonna be able to do a jump because of um, the fact that this Mandalorian Super Commando is of course in range four. So the only option for Cad there is to add two damage into the pool and we'll see how we go. It is eight dice. We do have the expertise online. Um, so it'll be uh, one crit and um, four strikes it seems. And we've got uh, three blocks for the um, for the Mandalorian. So three, uh, five, so we will get the two successes that we need, uh, which is going to get the shove on the Mandalorian Super Commandos, which will um, probably not get them off the point, uh, considering that, you know, the range two is a, a pretty big bubble there, but we can see if we do a tactical maneuver uh, or something similar. I'm not entirely sure how we mitigate this. 
I also think that um, the Cad Bane, uh, so the B2 Battle Droid uh, placement here has actually mitigated a lot of what Cad Bane could do. So if we do a shove and put the Mandalorian Super Commandos out of range four, um, we could actually have Cad Bane use um, No One Gets Between Me and My Job to jump take this ingress point and be up on the center here. However, now we have put the B2 battle droids up there, we won't be able to do that. Um, so we'll see what we end up deciding to do with Evil Houdini. Um, uh, I, yeah, so the B2 battle droids, of course, would be in range. Uh, there's the measuring for the jump, of course, from the no one gets between me and my job, but that's what I was saying. This uh, this placement of the B2s has is, is really unfortunately hindered Cad Bane here. So um, that's definitely something to keep in mind. You've got a whole bunch of out of activation movements, but you definitely don't want to put, um, you know, get things in um, Cad Bane's way. I guess the irony of his ability saying no one gets in between me and my job uh, and indeed someone has gotten between him and his job and that would be a b2 battle droid uh, so we'll see how we end up going we won't be able to take the point um, but no one will be claiming the center which means that evil houdini will score one uh, and morgan will claim one as well so that will be that and i, I think we just don't spend the force here um, with cad bane um, i mean we could but then he's not going to be able to get up on the point next yeah so i don't think we've done it we are spending the force on the b2 battle droids it seems to um have a crack into the mandalorian super commandos maybe um we're still thinking about it potentially we're deciding whether to tactical network or to cad bane okay so it looks like yeah we're just deciding to omit that we're going to score the objectives we're going to claim one for evil houdini no one claims the middle and we'll see what happens um what evil houdini is hoping is that the priority objective falls on dooku um just so he can maintain his sort of uh, involvement in struggle too and we'll see what morgan pulls let's have a look the timer is on morgan uh and we have pulled the aft trippers uh don't know if we've rolled for the priority just yet we did it is the block which is okay yeah so that's exactly what evil houdini wanted we did get the block so the priority will be maintained uh on the dooku objective um, but the aft troopers are going to be able to score two here i would say um, by just walking up um, and even if you know they get wounded it's not a huge deal because um they you know they can still use the coordinated fire it'll just cost one force and i think that's uh, exactly what we will see here um, so if you've just joined the uh, the stream, guys, uh, we've got a round four match between Morgan and Evil Houdini. Uh, I'm so sorry. We do need to update the um, the struggle trackers up the top here. So we do have one objective or one struggle claimed by Morgan, as you can see in the overlay now. Um, and we are just doing the second activation for the second struggle. Um, so this is essentially what we've got. So we've had the ARF troopers come in. Um, they have pulled the... Uh, the defensive maneuver after doing a move action and we're just going to see them claim the center objective here uh, i'm not sure if morgan wants to be in range two of the b2 battle droids um actually he probably does he probably doesn't mind about the uh, hunker token there and he'll just make sure that um the b2 battle droids have a harder time of using tactical network and getting some ranged attacks in um, and then we will have a shot uh, potentially putting out some pin um, results into the Magna Guard. So that is exactly what we're doing. So let's have a look. Seven dice plays five, uh, looking for some crits here. Uh, we do have two crits, which will indeed be um, two damage, one shove and a pin as well. So there we go. Two successes going through from the um, from the ARF Troopers. Good evening, the primary objective TV. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Um, and yeah, if you're first time watcher let me know what you like what you don't like we're having a little bit of uh trouble with the mod here there's a few things that i can't bring up um it's just one of those days for tts it seems um primary objective has his round four match on wednesday good luck uh very very good luck to you sir uh what do you think you're going to be playing against uh and into uh what do you think you're going to be using give us the lowdown um, so we've had the ARF troopers claim the center objective here and the rear objective. Um, so we'll see what happens for the priority objective. Uh, we haven't rolled it just yet. We're having a think. Uh, we have pulled Kraken um, before we've rolled the priority objective. Um, so we're just going for it, it seems. 
Um, primary objective seems to think that his Vader Plo list will be what he uses into uh, probably a Maul Talzin. Uh, Plo will be really cool. Uh, I think he's got a lot of synergy with uh, Vader there, so that's that's really interesting. Um, the force push for uh, free off of the objective, uh, sorry, off of the, uh, the free tactical uh, ability is really cool. Okay, so we've got another priority objective uh, where Dooku is. So the game really wants to, to keep Evil Houdini in it. Um, so yeah, we can probably easily get these after troopers off the center here with Kraken. Um, we've used uh, Do Not Let Them Escape, which is Kraken's tactical ability uh, on, it seems, the Magna Guard to clear their pins. Um, so we've had this guy down here clear the pin, and then we've had this one down here next to Dooku, um, of course, um, just dash up to get a little bit more involved. Uh, and Kraken has a, a really good combat tree. Uh, he's got some really, really early successes um, that involve pushes, which is exactly what you want. So you want to get in melee uh, to the aft troopers to strip their hunker token, uh, and then you want to get one or two successes to get some shoves. Uh, and Kraken's not a sneeze in combat either, um, so he's probably going to punch into the aft troopers here, hoping for some good results. Uh, and push these afts off. Now, the reason that this is good is because Kraken is very uh, durable and he's also going to have steadfast and protection whilst he's contesting this objective. So getting these aft troopers off uh, and putting the Kraken on will, will really help Evil Houdini uh, sort of stay in the game here. Um, not entirely sure what's happening uh, with the... Um, with uh, the movement here. I think we're just having a little bit of trouble with, um, of course, the the, the mod. Um, we're trying to stay out of uh, range two, so Morgan's just helping um, helping Evil Houdini get that measurement right, uh, probably because there's a little bit of glitching going on in, in the old mod here. So that's, uh, of course, a gentleman's move, uh, helping your opponent out when you cannot do it yourself. So very good. So we've elected, I think, to stay out of combat with the AF Troopers, which is fine. Um, we still get a really, really good um, uh, offensive uh, shot. Yeah, I completely agree, primary objective. If there was only a way to snap to the ladders, that would be fantastic. Um, now, the B, so the, the, uh, the AF Troopers will have um, uh, Steadfast here because they do have a hunker, though I'm not entirely sure if that hunker should be there because they are engaged with these uh, B2 battle droids. Um, but we'll see if that makes any difference at all. So we've got the two crits essentially that we need. Uh, we've actually got three crits there and three strikes. So six successes uh, and we've got uh, two blocks. So it's gonna be four successes going through on the tree um, for, um, for Kraken. Uh, so we're going to get probably two shoves, which is what we need. We're going to get, uh, we could get three shoves really if we wanted. So we might actually go straight down the, the, the middle here. So we go, you know, one damage and a pin, um, two damage and a shove, a free tactical ability, and then another shove, uh, which will be the one shove that you need to get this aft troop off the objective here. Uh, we've also had a measure from Cad Bane. He will be able to do some jumps. Um, so you actually, you know, might be in a position where you want to, um, uh, use the tactical network on these B2 battle droids here um, uh, to to get them out of the way, so Cad Bane can sort of come in and uh, and um, and join the fight in the middle here to to make it a little bit harder to pull the objective off of um, off of Evil Houdini. So we'll see. We've followed up once. Um, we'll see if we push again. Um, I'm just looking. Okay, so we've actually just gone for the straight damage here um, into um, the AF Troopers, uh, which will, I believe, have been done from Cad Bane. Um, so he's actually just refreshed two force there off of that ability because Cad Bane is the one doing the wounding. And when Cad Bane wounds, he does a heal and he also does a, a double force refresh because he is a bounty hunter. Okay, so um, that will be... Um, three points scored and a momentum for Evil Houdini. Um, so we're, we're back in it. We're back in the grind here. I'll be interested to see what we do with the tactical network though. Um, we probably want to get the Magna Guards up and at them and get a little bit more involved. Um, I'm not entirely sure if we've pulled the Shatter Point. I think the next activation for Morgan is the Shatter Point, uh, which will be really good. He'll be able to probably take this point back unless we have a cheeky tactical network being played from the Magna Guard. I think that is a mistake. Um, I think, you know, using the Magna Guard down here uh, to climb up this ingress point and get on 
um, on the on the on the middle here would be really good. It would force Vader to attack them, uh, and there's no way for Vader to get rid of two bodies off that point. Um, so that would have been what I do. Um, but it is okay. We'll see what happens now. Um, so we've got a B2 battle droid having a shot into someone. Um, we rolled four dice, so I think that's probably the Mandalorian Super Commandos. Um, yeah, I would say that's the Mandalorian Super Commandos. And we've also had... Yeah, it's just six dice, so we haven't spent any any force for the saturation fire. Yep, Mandalorian Super Commandos. So just trying to get uh, another wound there. Um, what do we end up getting? So we've got one... We've got two blocks into one success, and so it's just three damage into the Mandalorian Super Commando, so not a wound, uh, unfortunately, for Evil Houdini. But what I would have done there, guys, is probably just um, use Tactical Network on the Magna Guard just to make sure that this point is not easily taken. Uh, and this is really good for Morgan here. We're going to be able to pull the Shatter Point, and we probably just go Vader, um, or we just go Django. Um, so Django is going to be easily able to get Kraken off of the middle point here. Um, he's just going to be able to use Capture Wire, and then maybe even do some shots into him um, from down low. Uh, you can do it in any order, basically. Uh, and M Morgan's there just making sure that he can't push Kraken off in one shove, or the first shove that you do get into Kraken. Um, and that's probably why we decide to go with Django here, I would say. Uh, so let's see what we end up doing. We could just do Vader as well. He could do a Vader's Fury, a recover action, and then a attack, uh, and that will work as well. He does have uh, a few shoves on his other side, um, which isn't showing for me today, but that is okay. Um, let's see what he decides. I think, you know, the safe play is going to be um, Django. Uh, he can just get capture wide here. Um, but of course, uh, you could also go Maul. Maul could jump down off of the top, pull Kraken down um, this way, and then just use a uh, force speed to, of course, um, uh, uh, get on the point um, after doing an attack. But we could also do it this way, and, and Maul could, of course, just elect to do a saber throw instead. Um, so we've done a, a dash because of the shatter point ability. So that's really good. So that's press forward. Uh, because Maul's been activated by the Shadow Point, we get a dash. Uh, and now we're deciding to do the There Is No Place to Run. So there is the uh, the range tool being measured. Uh, it will easily be able to get off the point, um, which will take it back for Morgan. Uh, and this is exactly why, guys, I would have put the, um, the Magna Guard up the top there. Um, because now there's nothing that uh, Morgan needs to do. He can just throw a lightsaber at someone that he wants to instead of having to deal with both the Kraken and the Magna Guard. Um, so getting double bodies on a point really makes it difficult for a lot of characters to, to have a crack into you. Yep, primary objective TV. This is why I like Plow and Barris, all the pushes. Exactly. I mean, it's very similar to uh, what Maul's doing now with the out of activation, uh, sorry, the, the diceless displacement, which is uh, something that uh, Morgan really enjoys doing. Uh, and I, I think it's a very strong thing to do. Um, uh, you know, and so we've actually had Morgan um, do a move action down here to probably have a crack into Kraken, crack into Kraken, uh, which is. Uh, which is really strong. And then he'll probably be able to get a reposition um, uh, off the combat tree. And of course, um, uh, another action as well. <laughs> Morgan being no fun though, playing Django and uh, Obi-2. Well, fun is subjective, I guess. <laughs> fun is subjective. So we've had more coming in, um, doing a crit, a strike, um, and a damage from his expertise tree. Uh, and we've also had two strikes. So it will be one crit, three strikes into three blocks. No, just two blocks for Kraken. Um, so won't be able to do any, um, any uh, um, wounding uh, into Kraken, but we will be able to get all the repositions and the shoves, etc., cetera, um, because Kraken is no longer contesting this objective. Um, so we will get two successes. Um, we've Yep, done the reposition there um, to put Morgan back up onto the point. Um, I think that that is within two. Yeah, that's within two. So he's just going to be using the ingress point, going back there, clogging this uh, area up a little bit um, to make sure that no one else can use the ingress point and scoring the objective. And he still will have an activation to go, I believe, um, which will probably just be... Um, you know, take cover or a recover or something similar. Uh, and yeah, that is the objective pulled for Morgan. It will be three points scored. Um, 
and we are over to Evil Houdini who can use the Magna Guard. So this is why, uh, again, I keep saying this and I'm sorry to, to repeat it, but if, if the Magna Guard were up here, then we would have just been able to do something like a focus and punch uh, and make Maul's life a little bit more difficult. Um, but uh, as it is, I don't think that both Magna Guard will be able to make it up on the point. Um, or at least you will be able to get both Magna Guard on the point, but you won't be able to have a crack into uh, Maul um, because of the way that he's positioned. Uh, but we will be able to use this ladder. Uh, so I do think that both of the Magna Guard can just do one single move action um, and jump up on the point. Uh, they don't have any conditions stopping them from doing so. No, so I think their next activation is probably just something like a, um, a recover action. Um, I don't know what the priority objective was. I don't think we've rolled for that yet. Um, okay, we're deciding to climb instead of focusing on the objective here. Interesting. Uh, maybe just putting a little bit more conditions on to Vader, maybe. Um, but what I would have done there is definitely um, just put both these bodies up on the points, made it a little bit more difficult for you to take them off. And the second action could have just been a recover, uh, which would have cleared both of the damage. Because remember, when you do a recover action, each character in the unit can recover. Um, so that would have had a full uh, full health Magna Guard unit on the center objective, which would make it quite difficult um, for Morgan to take off, especially with you know a disarmed uh, Vader. Uh, there would have had to have been a few layers of things that we do to try and get all of the damage into the Magna Guard there. Um, so we'll see. Looks like we have got the center as the priority. Yep, center as priority. And this is, yep, yeah. okay. So if you had have just put uh, both bodies of the Magna Guards up on the point, you would have taken it. Um, so uh, this is a bit of a risk. I don't actually know that um, there's anything that we can do to get this objective unless we get lucky on the Magna Guard tree and we do a three success reposition. Um, so we could do that, guys, but it is, of course, relying on the dice. Um, and that's, that's, it's a risk, it's a risk. So we'll see how we go. I think, you know, Vader, who's exposed, anyone? No, no one is exposed. So we're probably going to try and do the the successes into Django Fett uh, because he's got less dice in melee. Um, he's only got five, uh, whereas Vader on his Form 5 Gem So has six defense dice uh, and a better... Oh, actually, they've got the same expertise tree. Yep, so double bodies on the point here would be uh, better, safer. I don't want to say better, but it would be safer, a safer way to get these objectives. Uh, and I would like to see some attacks here to make the most of it into Django to try and get those three successes. And we will see how the cookie crumbles here. I can hear dice being rolled. Uh, and it looks like we're actually going into Vader um, instead of the, the Django man. Um, so Vader has blocked four. Uh, and the R, the Magna Guard will get three crits, which is only two. So we won't actually get the reposition, which means that we won't have any ability to get onto the point here. Because uh, three crits is only, sorry, three expertise is only two, um, two crits. Okay, so double shove. Uh, I don't think there's a world where you can follow up um, onto the point either. It's worth trying. Um, so we'll see what we end up doing here. Um, he's, uh, so yeah, Vader's also done a repost here as well, um, which is another reason why we could have attacked Django instead. Um, okay, so we're doing a shove. We'll see. It looks like we're not following up on the first shove. Um, maybe we are. I would follow up just to see if we can get maybe close to getting on the point. Oh, it's cool. No, there's probably no way. I mean, you might actually be able to do it. If you push Vader out towards the point, um, then there is a chance that um, we do maybe get within range too, but it's a stretch. It's a stretch. Uh, and yet we won't be uh, taking any objectives back there. We will be scoring one for Evil Houdini, which will give both players a momentum. Um, and we will see what happens uh, with uh, Morgan's next activation. Okay. Bear with me for a moment. We're just trying to put uh, Vader underneath that gantry, but it can be a little bit difficult with the mod uh, acting up the way it is. Uh, 
Okay, so if you've just tuned in, guys, as I said before, uh, we do have a round four match here. This is um, the uh, the current episode two TTS Shatterpoint League between Morgan and Evil Houdini. Um, and this is a round four game. Both of these players are undefeated at the moment. Um, and we're going into Morgan's activation uh, for struggle two. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, priority is Morgan's control. So, you know, to, to really grasp control of um, the this struggle, we could uh, try and get Dooku off the point here. Uh, we can do that multiple ways. We can do that with Maul. We can do that with um, Django. Um, in fact, we... We cannot do it with Maul um, because we do indeed have um, uh, uh, one active uh, unit up on this objective, which is the Magna Guard. The B2 battle droids are, of course, wounded. Um, and we've pulled Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay, Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding. Um, so that was the first pull of Struggle 1, and it is the first pull of Struggle 2 as well. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're thinking about a run here, which is uh, a good idea, um, but it is a risk going into Dooku as well. Yeah, so there we go. We've decided to put him into reserve and see if we can pull Django. No, we've pulled the Aft Troopers. Uh, that's fine. Um, there's no sort of risk there. Um, you're not going to be able to score four points here, um, but you might be able to put a wound on the Magna Guard or something similar. So that's probably a fine draw for Morgan and just cementing these objectives as well. Um, so we've, you know, we've got two bodies now now being Maul and the Arf Troopers, which is going to allow Maul to exit the point. And we've got this objective back here secured as well. So yeah, I'd say probably just going to try and get a momentum from a, a Magna Guard wound. We need six damage and we might even have a focus here. Uh, no, nah, so no focus for the Arf Troopers, but a really motter of a roll. That's great. Three crits is going to put a disarm or an expose on them um, and do a pin and three damage total as well. So that's really good. We'll decide what we put on to the Magna Guard. Um, we might even put an expose on them. Yeah, just to make the uh, the next Arf Trooper shot a little bit more effective. Uh, and that will be three damage. So that goes up to seven. And we're probably going to be able to wound them here as well now uh, which is really strong um, because um, they'll need two successes to get three damage uh, because of the pin being doubled up so we'll see what happens after troopers just deliver 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 that's five successes <laughs> yep six successes from the aft troopers so that will be a full tree thanks to an exposed magna guard so that will be a wound and that's really cemented this center objective for morgan here um, and you know because the uh, magna guard are of course not a primary or a secondary unit that won't be triggering any of count dooku's abilities here so that is exactly what we were sort of talking about at the very beginning of the game the the way to really deal with these droids is of course wounding the support characters because the secondary and the primary will usually give you some sort of triggering events like uh, Dooku's refresh of force and moving um, and you know if you shut down the ability for them to score out of activation um, thanks to all the tactical networking and the separatist leadering etc etc uh, you know you're really going to be preventing um, a lot of the shenanigans that they can do so that's going to be a four point swing for Morgan being three objective points uh, and a momentum and we'll see how we respond for evil Houdini evil Houdini is really not going to want this objective back here to go priority um, so we'll see what we do instead Kraken just moved <laughs> Kraken had a big move just there um, so unfortunately we had a, a little bit of a glitch on the TTS mod and Kraken went flying um, not sure what's going on today usually it's a lot more smooth than this but um, it is what it is uh, and we'll see how we go yeah it was about about there um, away from the objective point just out of range two so we'll see what happens so let's roll the priority and then draw a card for evil houdini um, we haven't scored points for morgan yet we're still um still set to go onto the three point i'm not sure if morgan scored his momentum either i think we have oh yeah we're just doing a take cover with the aft troopers here okay and i yeah again i don't I, I've actually forgotten the engaged rules. Maybe someone in the chat can um, can let me know. I, I believe you're still engaged with wounded units and therefore you won't actually be able to gain or keep hunker tokens. But um, if I am wrong, please correct me. Um, I am not going to jump in the chat because uh, I don't know if I'm... Yeah, I thought you were engaged. Yeah, anyway, we can follow that up at the end. It hasn't made a big difference or any difference in this game uh, as of yet. Um, both players have gotten exactly what they want in terms of results uh, for the meantime. Um, okay, so we have got the middle objective being the priority result. 
Um, so let's see what happens. Uh, what have we pulled? We pulled the shatter point. So the shatter point is of course allowing someone to do a dash before they activate. Um, who could we do that on? We need to remove two players from, so two characters from the center objective here. We need to remove Maul and we need to remove these ARF troopers. Um, so, you know, the, the best way to do that is probably with the B2 battle droids. Um, uh, we, we could move the B2s. Looks like we actually might be going for a um a magna guard yeah so i think we are going for kraken maybe no we'll see i don't actually know we haven't had a ping yet it's either kraken or the magna guard that are activating i think it might actually be the the magna guard let's have a look we're just measuring for the ingress point at the moment Mm. Yeah, okay. So it looks like we've activated the Magna Guard. But I still don't know because the tactical abilities can be used in any order. Okay, so no, we've gone with Kraken. Okay, I, I stand corrected. Um, so uh, Kraken, I don't believe... I think the only way to get this point back would have been Kraken dashing... Um, up to this point here. Okay. So Kraken's definitely doing a shot into the Arf Troopers um, and he's getting a really, really good roll there. So that's going to be six successes and three crits um, into two blocks. So it's going to be a full tree for Kraken. Looks like we've forgotten about um, the press forward ability on the objective. Uh, yep, so we because we've done the shadow point, we could have been doing a dash, um, but unfortunately we, we haven't triggered that. And instead we've just used Kraken's tactical ability, which is do not let them escape uh, onto the Magna Guard, which has left this Magna Guard stationary to clear the pin and then moved this Magna Guard into position to have a crack at the Aft Troopers. But I don't actually think the Aft Troopers are, um, are going to survive this. Uh, we've got a full tree from Kraken. And he can, of course, do, I think, seven damage. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so he can do seven damage um, on Kraken. Uh, and this is why I think what the better play would have been here would have been to um, sort of have the Magna Guard go centrally. Um, and then we can wound the Arf Troopers. I mean, you have to get pretty lucky, but you can wound the Arf Troopers or at least shove them off the point because of uh, all the shoves that Kraken has to play with. And then use Tactical Network to shove Maul off the point. Um, and that would have worked and that would have claimed the objective for uh, Kraken. Um, but we... We haven't done that and we're just looking at doing a Cad Bane, no one gets me between the me and my job. Uh, yeah, exactly. So primary objective, uh, the five dice attack would have taken the point. Uh, the reason that we say that guys is because uh, the Magna Guard have really, really good shoves on their, their tree, um, but it is worth considering that the Magna Guard are indeed disarmed. So you would have just been relying on raw dice, but either way you skin the cat, um, you just needed one shove even on Maul here, um, I believe to take him off the point. Um, uh, you know, with that angle. So you could have had this Magna Guard who was positioned sort of right behind where the Arf Trooper was. Um, just sort of... Um, oh, no, he was he was up here. Yeah, so maybe you wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, but we are climbing uh, with our second action. Um, probably going to start try and stay out of uh, Maul range. Um, even the B2s could have done it. You know, if you get one lucky crit, um, they would have been able to shove uh, Maul off. Um, and, uh, and I think that would have been a better... Uh, play, but we still might do that. We don't know. Yeah, it looks like we're measuring for the tactical network now. Um, I just feel like the uh, the Magna Guard coming a little bit more central would have been the play there, uh, but we'll see what we end up doing. We're maybe considering a tactical network onto Kalani, and you can do that because they are a battle droid. It doesn't have to be a battle droid support, um, but Kalani doesn't have all the shoves and the good stuff that... Um, that uh, Kraken does. They've unfortunately only got the one shove. Uh, two shoves if you get the full tree, but uh, unlikely uh, against a, a super, super powerful character like Maul. Um, but you never know, you never know. So yeah, we're going for the B2 battle droids with the tactical network. We probably want to stay out of, um, out of range of uh, Maul here. Uh, and unfortunately guys, just to remember, you can't actually measure 
angles before you trigger an ability that allows you to do so. So for example, if you want to measure a shove, it has to be eyeballs until you actually put the tools down on the table. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, there is no ability for Morgan to spend mind trick, um, but I think we just go for the shove here and that is indeed what we've done. Um, so we've got one crit and that's all you need into more um, to get the shove here. So hopefully we've got the angle right. Um, It'll be tight, but I think we can get the shove onto Maul with the B2 battle droids. And just remember guys that there is a crit uh, and the crit on the B2 battle droids is of course the uh, the one success that you need. So let's, let's have a look. I think the angle's there. I do think the angle's there uh, to get the shove here. It'll just come down to whether or not the ladder um, uh, works no so if we push Maul into the corner we probably still get him off the objective so I mean even if you can't get him off um, yeah you definitely won't be able to push him off the, the the ladder but pushing him into the into the corner here should get him off and there we go all right so it was a long-winded way of doing what we wanted um, but we got there in the end and we have taken the center point with Kraken um, going off of the shatter point um, so good Good play from Evil Houdini, uh, and uh, we haven't wounded more, which is which is a good thing. Um, and yeah, we're going to score three and give both players a, another momentum. Um, so that is going to slow Morgan down in terms of um, winning the struggle uh, early. We might um, put that. It depends on how the priority objective rolls, but we'll see what the next activation is. Um, Morgan could score four points and a wound with maybe something like Django, um, but we'll, s we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, okay, so a Django pull could work uh, work wonders here. We could potentially wound um, Kalani, or sorry, wound Kraken, um, and we could, of course, um, pull uh, the Dooku off the point here as well. Um, but we actually, yeah, we wouldn't actually flip control of the center point here because we've got no other uh, character on the center. So I don't think Morgan can win uh, in, in one here um, without taking... Yeah, no, Morgan has no uh, win the struggle in one activation opportunity here, but we will be able to set ourselves up um, depending on what we get. So we're considering an Obi play. Um, I don't know if Obi will be able to get over there uh, into Dooku um, from where he is. The double run probably does, um, but no, we've decided to keep Obi in reserve and go with Darth Vader instead. So that's pretty good. Darth Vader won't need to worry about the Magna Guard because they are indeed wounded. Um, so we can just sort of move up into the center. Um, I wonder if we want to go for Dooku here. I wonder if we want to go for Dooku. Dooku has not been touched yet. Um, we've got two force, which means we can turn two strikes into failures for um, Vader's attack. Um, and we're just deciding what we want to do here, it seems. I think we probably take control of the center. Yeah, I completely agree, primary objective. It's best to just ignore Dooku. Um, uh, it is the primary objective though, so we could get enough shoves, etc., to, to get him off the point. But if we roll sort of um, poorly, um, then we won't be able to get there. Um, just keep in mind, guys, that we are going for Dooku and we are moving Vader underneath the um, the gantry here. We're just doing it for ease of ease of practice um, to to of course uh, to to just get him. Um, get him where he needs to be. So that that was a move underneath the gantry for uh, for Vader. So we're not going up in any elevation or anything like that. And we are going for Dooku and we are going to expose him for a force as well. Uh, keep in mind, we've added two dice into the damage pool um, from Vader's Fury, but we are disarmed. So this might not actually equate into a, um, a Vader wound here or a, or a Dooku wound. And we actually might see um, uh, Dooku's... Uh, um, uh, what is it called? Surely you can do better trigger here. So we'll see what happens. This is a disarmed Vader. We'll see how well we can roll. We're not taking extra damage. Um, yeah, so we've still got two crits, which is which is nice. Uh, and that's not a great roll for Dooku either. Um, but if we do decide to spend those two force, we could indeed um, take no... No, we're still going to get pushed, etc. And we don't have the force to trigger um dooku's twice the pride double the fall because we'll actually need three force to do that here yeah exactly uh durilvar that is exactly right but we did get what we wanted i think so we've ended up um getting 
it depends on how much we have spent the force um, to turn off all of the hits from vader um, but i believe we still get one shove but the shove won't it probably won't be enough to get him off the point here but we will have to see uh, Morgan should have spent three force for uh, for the expose. There's only only one force for the expose and one force for the um, uh, for the Vader's fury because no one else is wounded. Oh, there you go. They are wounded a second time. I'm sorry. They should have spent one more force. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, primary objective, um, we actually don't know if these are the real results uh, just because. Um, uh, the TTS mod is is really uh, struggling at the moment. Um, there's, you can see all these zeros, etc. So the force wasn't showing up for the for the first half of the game, etc. Um, okay, so there shouldn't be a retaliatory attack um, from Dooku because the uh, twice the pride, double the fall does cost a force. But this is sort of what we're talking about. Um, I think they might have had extra force and we just didn't see it. So we are getting an attack into Darth Vader. Um, as a return strike i'm not sure how much we've blocked looks like we've blocked uh two and we've got how many successes should be three successes in return there as well so um three successes on dooku is pretty good when he's on his murder side uh we could get uh oh we can't get shoves but we can strain him and do you know a bunch of damage but we don't want to wound vader <laughs> and we might have just wounded vader nope we haven't Let's have a look. All right, so we're, let's see. We've scored the points. Uh, we scored one point for Morgan um, and we still have control of a few. So we've got the, the middle and the, the back point for um, for Evil Houdini uh, and we'll see if we can exert some pressure out here because these ARF troopers are indeed wounded. Um, okay, so uh, if you've just joined, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are having a few TTS technical difficulties. Unfortunately, we can't see the actual um, remaining force that we've got for each player. Um, and um, we've got a few errors showing up as well. Like everywhere I, I wound, I, I move my mouse, um, we've got things showing up, which shouldn't happen um, on spectator mode, but it is what it is. Uh, we've currently got one struggle for Morgan in the bag, uh, and we've got, um, uh, this is the second struggle, uh, and we've got Evil Houdini activation at the moment. Um, Evil Houdini has control of the center objective and this objective down here, uh, and these ARF troopers and Magna Guards are both wounded. So we'll see what we pull. It is Count Dooku. So we don't actually... We probably don't want Count Dooku here. We probably might even think about putting him in reserve if we have the force. I'm not entirely sure if we do. Um, the only problem with wounding Darth Vader is, of course, the triggering of the Sith Lord Strikes Back. So you don't have to be wounded by a, um, a melee attack. You can be wounded by a ranged attack. Uh, and then he gets to jump in and make a five dice attack. Um, now that is probably okay, considering Dooku's... Um, no, Dooku doesn't even have his really good expertise tree here. So this is a risky play um, because Dooku only has three damage left. So we'll see what happens. It's a great roll. Uh, if we can get a pin onto um, Darth Vader, which we should be able to do, then we can. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. Um, so let's just try and think. Uh, we've got five successes and a crit, five strikes and a crit uh, into three, four blocks, I believe. Um, so it will be two going through. No, we have wounded him. Can we put a disarm on him or any of the conditions? We'll have to see. I'm not entirely sure um, what we've put on. I think we might've just gone for raw damage there. Uh, and here's the Sith Lord Strikes Back trigger, which is scary. And we just keep in mind here, guys, we're not in Count Dooku's um, uh, other side. Let's see if we can bring that up. Unfortunately, I can't use it. But yeah, we're having a Sith Lord Strikes Back attack from Darth Vader, um, which is scary indeed, uh, because that could wound uh, Count Dooku. Looks like we got two successes through uh, to get the heals. And here we go. It's a good roll. It's three crits going through uh, on Darth Vader, and that is indeed going to be a wounded Dooku, uh, which will it will maintain control uh, of the objective for Dooku um, because um, Vader is wounded as well. But it will be a wound, um, and we'll see what ends up happening. Could be a big swing. Could be a big swing. It will trigger um, the 
brave but foolish ability. So you will get two force back from Count Dooku um, and you'll get a separatist supporting unit attack. I don't entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure what we'll use that on. We could use the B2s to maybe get a wound on something. Maybe have a crack at the Mandalorian Super Commandos or something similar. Um, but um, yeah. It will still be three points and a momentum scored for Evil Houdini, however. So that's pretty good. Okay. Okay, indeed. So we're still thinking about... Yeah, so we've gotten the force back, you can see, from the Brave But Foolish. And we're just thinking about... Um, which uh, which character to use Brave But Foolish on. I think, you know, you could probably just have a crack from the B2 Battle Droids into the Super Mandalorian Commandos, or the Mandalorian Super Commandos, I should say. You could also maybe put some pressure onto Maul. Um, yeah, so here we go. We're having a crack into the Mandalorian Super Commandos with the B2s from the Brave But Foolish trigger after Dooku was wounded here, guys. So that is what is happening. And that's a fantastic role as well. Uh, we've got um, four blocks uh, into two crits. So two crits from the, the B2 battle droids is going to be three damage. So the Mandos will be uh, on seven damage. So one short, unfortunately, but we could see Cad Bane coming in here. Um, yeah, we could see, uh, oh no, it's a combat action. So we cannot use Cad Bane. We cannot use Cad Bane's No One Gets Between Me and My Job um, because it is not a combat action that was just used. It was just an attack. Interesting. We needed one expertise there or something similar uh, to get the wound. Um, but it is a... Yeah, if we actually had have gotten the wound, that would have been a struggle win for Evil Houdini. Um, but we are one short. We are one short. So let's see what happens. One, two, three. Yep, yeah, one short. Okay, close game, close struggle. We'll see how Morgan responds. We're rolling the priority objective down here. It is a block, so that is Dooku's objective. And we just need to stand one healthy character on the point. And Morgan's hovering his mouse over um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is probably a, a reasonable uh, character to pick here because he is in reserve for Morgan. So we could just see a double... Uh, a double move basically one from run and one from um just a more normal move action and then we might even be able to do an attack or some heals along the way uh, so just keep in mind here guys basically what we're doing is because it's a bit of a pain to get um these characters underneath gantries etc uh, on tts we are probably just going to see morgan put them up the top but it's not going to make a difference to the final position um, because these are of course empty down the bottom so we don't have to worry about that um, so basically Morgan is one, two, three, four, five, six points away from winning the struggle. Um, and he is looking at scoring three here. And I don't think there's a way for Morgan to get six with uh, a single character. Um, we are probably thinking about maybe doing a cheeky attack on the way. Okay, so we're definitely doing Obi-Wan Kenobi. We're definitely doing a move. Keep in mind, guys, that we are just going underneath this gantry uh, with the run ability. He does get a heal and a move. Um, so we'll see him overlap uh, Darth Maul here, but again, we're not actually placing there. This is underneath the gantry. It's just uh, for ease of use on the TTS mod. Can be a little bit of a trigger, uh, of, of, of a tricky thing to do uh, to get them you know, uh, underneath these gantries, etc. So we're not quite in range with the double move uh, and we are just going to take cover onto the point to score it with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, so I, I do think attacking Vader there was a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a missed trigger or missed opportunity. Uh, you could have done it if Dooku was in his other, um, other side. Um, I'm not sure what that's called. I think it might be Jarkai. He's a really good Jarkai uh, defensive trigger. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, we saw Dooku go down and that allows Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, for example, to just jump on this point and take it. So that will be three points for Morgan. And Evil Houdini needs to score uh, four points to take the struggle. So we could get... Evil Houdini already has this objective. We need one person to just stand over here because these ARF troopers are, of course, wounded. So if we can get a wound on the way, um, then we will win the struggle for Evil Houdini. Um, so who is close to being wounded? I mean, that is pretty easy to do, right? You just go for the Mandalorian Super Commandos and get one damage through. Looks like we've drawn the Magna Guard and they are in a prime position to do it. So you move this Magna Guard down onto this point. 
you move this Magna Guard over to these Mandalorian Super Commandos uh, and you just have a smack and that will of course um, win you the struggle and I think that should be what we do here. Uh, there's no protection from um, Mind Trick or anything like that so I think that's probably the play. I would just keep them in the bag. Keep them Evil Houdini, keep them. We're still thinking. What else could do it? Uh, we don't want to draw... We don't want to draw the B2 battle droids. Yeah, so we've decided to keep the Magna Guard and I think that is that is smart. So that's that's it. So we're moving this Magna Guard over here. We're just praying that we don't whiff. <laughs> we need one expertise basically to do this. Uh, and then this Magna Guard is walking down onto this point with the Aft Trooper to score it. Uh, keep in mind guys that the Aft Trooper is indeed wounded uh, and we'll have a prey because we really don't want to uh, miss this uh, attack opportunity. Um, I guess what we could do of course guys is just trigger Cad Bane um, he could just spend one force um, to guarantee the attack with his nobody gets between me and my job. So it's a guaranteed wound here and that will give uh, Evil Houdini some force triggers as well. Um, they should not be disarmed because they would have healed everything. Um, so this is an attack and that is exactly what we need. So that's three crits into um, the into the Mandalorian Super Commandos uh, and it will be um, uh, four blocks. So just three crits going through for the Mandalorians. Um, so hopefully he cleans up his uh, his attacks here. So this is this all should all be gone, and this token here should be flipped to uh, to the injured side uh, instead of the wounded side because we have just activated the Magna Guard, and that will be the struggle win for Evil Houdini. So very very good there, guys, uh, and we'll have about. Um, yeah, 30 minutes on the clock for Morgan to go and about 20 minutes on the clock for Evil Houdini to go. So it shouldn't be an issue. We should probably easily be able to finish this struggle out. And let's have a think. So if we pull the middle objective here, um, that will favor Evil Houdini. We will get uh, Cad Bane screwing this one. We will have Kalani screwing this one. And we will have um, Morgan screwing uh, this one with Django Fett. Uh, and then there's also the option for the uh, Sidewinders as well. So we've got this objective being active, this objective being active up where Cad is, and then this one down here. Uh, and then we'll also have the opposite of that. So we would have the um, this Magna Guard, um, this objective, which I think Kalani might be on, uh, and then this objective with uh, Django Fett. So all of them are actually two out of three for um, Evil Houdini here. So that's a pretty good struggle three uh, draw here, um, no matter what happens. So it'll be a really interesting close struggle three. After a disastrous struggle one for Evil Houdini, he has managed to come back and he's got a pretty good board position to do so as well. Um, so this will be, yeah, this will be really interesting. And we have had an attack just into the... Um, the Aft Trip is here, um, just trying to probably put some more conditions on them. We'll see how many successes we got. Uh, it looks like full tree uh, on them. So we could put down maybe a, a disarm. Yeah, I'd put, put down a disarm or yeah, that's probably all I'd do. He has shoved and followed up. We're probably not gonna reposition. We just wanna sit on the objective. So guys, if you sit one model on the objective like we have here with uh, Evil Houdini, one shove won't be able to get you off the objective. So that is a good deployment placement there. Uh, and here we go. So that is the struggle win. Uh, and let's see what we pick for struggle number three. Let's see. Well, we don't have any agency of it. That's uh, that's why we like Shatterpoint um, in terms of the sabotage showdown. Um, the loser of struggle two has no agency to pick the best or most optimum optimum uh, deployment or pattern for struggle number three. So it can be really, really a good balancing factor. It sort of takes away that winner of struggle one has a slight advantage going into struggle three if they do lose struggle two. So that's a, a good option there. Um, so I'll just update the tracker here. So we can see now guys, we've just exited um, just exited uh, the end of struggle two. So both players have one struggle uh, and we do have Morgan's activation coming up now um, in terms of this struggle. Okay, cool. So we will have over here, uh, we will have a claim for Obi-Wan. We will have a claim for Cad Bane and we will have a claim for these Magna Guard down here. So. Currently, Evil Houdini controls two of the three objectives, um, but how many cards have we drawn? Three. So we've got, um, I think we've got uh, Shatterpoint, 
and Maul in the bag. So Maul is a fantastic uh, character to use here. We have drawn Django though, so that's another really good character to pull. So we could basically move Django from over here into a Cad Bane range or uh, down here for the Magna Guard. Um, but we probably wanna take the Cad Bane route just because of course that is the priority objective. So we probably won't even see any attack actions coming in from Django uh, and we will just see him do some moves, do some my client is getting impatient, um, do a, a pull. Um, and uh, we will see him do a jump as well. Oh no, we've actually decided to put Django in the bag and Maul is even better. So we're just probably going to see uh, Maul trigger. Um, uh, there is no place to run uh, and then he'll take the objective. Uh, and of course, just probably throw a lightsaber at someone and have a good time. Uh, and that will be three points scored for Morgan. So that is a good pull. Maul, Maul is always really good. And let's see uh, what the Shatterpoint um, ability is here. Uh, stick to the plan. So this is going to be a force regeneration um, uh, objective. So anyone that's chosen to activate with um, the shutter point will also get to refresh a force ability as well. So this is uh, two damage being taken on Maul for there is no place to run on Cad Bane. Uh, we're going to pull him over the top onto the, the bottom floor here. And I would say we're then going to just... Um, chuck a lightsaber <laughs> into Cad Bane, and then of course do a, um, uh, a jump um, into, sorry, uh, just a climb into this objective. Now the, the expose here is really good because it does turn off the potential for Cad Bane to jump off of his expertise tree. Um, so that is nice for Morgan. We, we won't have any ability for um, Evil Houdini to, to take this objective back in his turn. So. There's a move uh, and we're just throwing a lightsaber into uh, the Magna Guard over here. So that's really good. Um, just getting a little bit of damage in um, and they are exposed already apparently on the Magna Guard. So that is strong. Okay, and that's a great roll from the uh, the Lord Maul. So we've got um, two crits going in and three strikes. So it's gonna be four damage total, which is the magic number for Maul, of course. We do like to see that. Maul will get two heals. Uh, he'll get some shoves, reposition options, and he'll probably want to pin the uh, Magna Guard as well, just to make sure that they don't um, sort of come into the battle a bit you know, too quickly. Uh, but we also have the opportunity of making them exposed as well, which does open them up to being wounded by you know, things like the Arf Troopers or Django Fett, for example, as well. So that's, uh, both of those options are really strong. Um, so we'll see what happens here. And that's a strong uh, start of activation for Morgan, or start of struggle, I should say. We've still got Django in the bag, uh, or in the hole, as some people refer it to. Um, there's the reposition just sort of going back on top of this objective. Again, um, if you put your base on the objective, uh, one shove and one shove only won't be able to get you off. So that's really strong as well. And then, of course, uh, Django and a shadow point can come in um, and um, you know do some big swing plays for uh, Morgan, should he need them. Uh, so that will be three points scored for Morgan um, and uh, one objective claimed for Evil Houdini. So very good. This is the priority objective role here. It is the diamond. So the diamond is uh, Maul's objective. So uh, good placement. Uh, Maul is sort of in the danger zone for being wounded. He only needs four to go. Uh, and that is a good draw from, um, I would say, from Evil Houdini. So we've got Kalani here. I would say we probably just want to shoot Maul. Uh, if we get the wound, he won't be able to trigger revenge. I must have revenge because it is uh, only triggerable by a melee attack. And then Kalani can just do a climb and hit this ladder and take the objective as well. So that is the way that uh, Evil Houdini gets the points back, I would say. Um, so let's see how we do that. And we can also maybe get Cad Bane up there. No, we won't be able to. Cad Bane should have an expose. Uh, he, he might've even put it on there, um, but unfortunately we're having a, a few bugs with the old TTS today, guys. So you'll have to just bear with me. 
Um, yep, so we've got a Kalani trigger. We're just using uh, Roger Roger now to move around all of our uh, droids. Uh, and this is eight dice into Darth Maul. So we're just looking to get four damage through for Kalani, which isn't a tall order with her amazing expertise tree. Um, so we've got one crit uh, and four strikes into um, five blocks. So we actually, it, it might be a tall order. <laughs> We'll have to see what happens. Uh, the first success on Kalani is just two damage. Um, so we're really gonna be relying on um, the B2 battle droids uh, here. Uh, or we just use Cad Bane, Notorious Hunter, to get the wound, um, which will, of course, refresh the force, etc. cetera. Um, and I think that's probably a better way to do it, uh, to be honest. Um, we could use Tactical Network on someone else, maybe, to get a wound on someone else. Um, no, we're just going to use the, the, the B2 battle droids. I would, I would have preferred to use Cad Bane there to get some force back, um, but there are the two damage from the expertise tree um, on the B2 battle droids. So no matter what Morgan rolls here, um, it will be a Darth Maul wound. And then the second activation from um, Kalani can just be a climb to hit this ingress point and stand in the corner uh, and of course take the point back for uh, Evil Houdini. So I think that is the play. Um, Yep, here we go. So there's the climb action, guys. Um, I'm tempted to stand in this corner um, just so it makes Django's pull a little bit more tricky, and I think that is what we're doing. Yep, I think that's best. Yeah, and you will be able to fit there, so that is nice. And that just makes Django's pull angles a little bit more tricky with his capture wire, uh, and that will take the point back for, um, for Evil Houdini. So that'll be three points. Uh, and both players will score a momentum. So we've got slightly in the lead here for Evil Houdini, who has two momentum. Uh, we'll, we'll have three momentum here, uh, but Morgan will, of course, get uh, another activation to counter this. So this is going to be a hotly contested point. Uh, how many points, how many cards do we have left? Two. So we've got, I think, the ARF Troopers. No. We've got the Super Commandos, and we've got the Shatter Point in the bag here. Um, we got the block, which is uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's objective. So that is good for Morgan. He will just, of course, automatically get at least two points. Um, and who do we draw? We could go with Django. I think we probably just draw, though. We're just going to check. And this is good reference for me as well. Yep, so the Super, Super Mandalorian Commandos um, and the, um, the Shatter Point are in the bag for uh, Morgan. Uh, and we've got um, Django in the hole in reserve as well. So Django isn't the most appealing activation here in terms of influencing this objective, but he could easily uh, deal with these Magna Guard and put himself in a, in a position to maybe get some not so fast abilities. And I think that is what Morgan will consider. Um, he just wants to score three points here um, to sort of keep, keep a good lead here. Um, and I think that's probably the best way to do it. Okay. That's fine as well. I mean, you can save Django for a big, important swing play with all of your diceless displacement. Uh, and the Mandalorian Super Commandos shouldn't have an issue uh, dealing with uh, Kalani because Kalani is very, very fragile in combat. Um, they are a super tactical droid um, and they're not very aggressive. They're just cold logic. Uh, so they just want to make sure that um, they stay out the back and order their command, their provide the commands from the back line. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening here. So we could use the Mandalorian Super Commandos to also deal with the um, the the, Mandal uh, the Magna Guard as well. They could just sort of move over here, take this objective, wound the Magna Guard who are pinned, not exposed, but they've only got uh, two health left, which is no tall order for the Mandalorian Super Commandos. They're very adept um, at being able to to do enough damage. They're really good at killing primaries as well, uh, or primary hunting um, for the wounds because they sort of double tap. The first one probably gets uh, some shoves or some exposes uh, or even some strains and the second one comes in and, and does a big hit. So they're a really reliable unit to have as well. Um, so Morgan's just considering probably whether or not to go for Kalani or for the Magna Guard. Uh, you could also do both. There is also the potential to do that. Um, so we're thinking about a jump here maybe. Oh no, this will be a, um, a move uh, because this Magna Guard is engaging um, this uh, Mandalorian Super Commando. But we could also just attack first um, and maybe even do a, a ranged attack into, um, into Kalani and that does appear to what we're 
to be what we're doing. So we've focused and just had a crack into um, into the Magna Guard, and that, that's a strong role. That is a really, really strong role. So we've got seven strikes and one critical into four blocks. So seven uh, down, so eight down to four. Um, so will we get a free jump? Will we get a free jump or a reposition? That is the question. We do get the jump, um, so that is good. Oh, I see, sorry, guys, we didn't focus. We instead just um, uh, took two damage from Vader to roll three extra dice. Uh, so that's why we end up with nine. Um, and yeah, so we still got one action in the bag here. And it looks like Morgan is um, gonna be able to do a follow-up uh, into um, Kalani with a ranged attack here. Uh, which might be cheeky enough to actually get this point back if we get a lucky enough roll and get a shove. Um, and we're yeah, doing enough damage to wound the Magna Guard there. We will be able to get this Mandalorian Super Commando onto this point um, next to this Magna Guard. And we're doing a ranged attack into Kalani as well. So yeah, good play there. We can't obviously add dice into, the, um, into a ranged attack, but that is a good roll. That is a very good roll. Um, and only one block. So that will actually get the shove that we need on the Mandalorian Super Commando. So that's a really, really big swing there. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. It won't. They need four successes for a shove. Uh, not three. I thought it was three. Um, so no shove, um, but we will be able to get up on the points with the Kalani. Um, and yeah. So that, that's a good good turn for Morgan. Um, he only needs one more sort of body to sit on this point up here with uh, Kalani um, uh, after the, band, the, the, the Mandalorian Super Commandos jump up there. Yeah, so the next action is of course just an advance. I'm gonna be using this ingress point here um, to get up on the point with Kalani and advancing over onto this point here with the Magna Guard. There we go. Beautiful, that will be a three point swing plus a momentum for Morgan. And we'll have to see how Evil Houdini responds. So oh, before you draw, okay, we've got Cad Bane. Um, we do need to roll the priority objective first though. Do need to roll the priority objective first. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it will determine you know, whether or not uh, whether or not we want to put Cad Bane in reserve. So we've used Shatterpoint, and this is the second primary. So we've got Kraken and the B2s left in the order deck, I believe. Kraken and the B2s, yep, exactly. So Kraken is decent here. He might be able to get enough shoves off onto Obi-Wan Kenobi um, because Obi-Wan will not be able to afford the mind trick uh, yet. So Kraken's actually a pretty good uh, little shout there if he gets a good enough angle. Um, but we really need to roll that priority objective just to see where we do want to go. Um, here it is. Here it is. So the failure is this objective down here. Um, so that is important. Now, we probably don't want to use Cad Bane uh, and we probably want to go for Kraken um, into these Mandalorian Super Commandos. Um, just have a ranged attack at them um, and give them some shoves or something similar. Yep, so there it is. So we've put the uh, put Cad Bane into reserve, pull Cad, um, Kraken. We will be able to use Kraken's uh, ability called Do Not Let Them Escape. I'd probably just use that on himself just to try and get a better ranged angle uh, onto this Mandalorian Super Commando. And you just want to have a big shot and just throw all the dice that you can. You know, you use the, um, the, the, the focus, you use the extra dice from Kalani, and then you, of course, use Tactical Network as well um, to make sure that um, you, you either B2 them or Magna Guard them. Um, but the Magna Guard are disarmed, whereas the B2s are not. So it's actually probably better to go for the B2s here, but we'll see what we decide to do. Um, this is, of course, the objective that you want to go for with uh, Evil Houdini. So... I think that is the choice. Uh, and it's really good for Morgan to have Django in the bag here because uh, once Evil Houdini scores three, he'll go to zero. Uh, and then we will be able to have um, uh, both players gain a momentum, which will mean Morgan will need one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he probably won't be able to win next turn. Um, so it will be a bit back and forth. Um, okay, so we've gone with uh, Kraken. We've decided instead to use this Magna Guard uh, to come in. 
um, to have a look. Um, so one will clear the pin, of course, uh, and then one will uh, do the actual move, which is what just happened, because do not let them escape allows both units or all characters in a unit to move. Uh, and we're just doing a shot straight away, it seems. Um, interesting, I probably would have preferred to do do not let them escape on Kraken himself, just to put him right next to this uh, ingress point, um, next to the box here. Maybe get a little bit of a better angle for a shove. Um, and uh, that would, you know, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. We'll see what we end up doing. So guys, if you've just joined us, uh, we are watching uh, the fourth round of a um, uh, the, the current TTS league for Shatterpoint. Um, this is episode two, uh, so the second sort of season. Both players here have a struggle that you can see in the top left and top right hand corner. Um, and um, this is Evil Houdini's activation. Uh, and this is essentially where we're looking at in terms of the struggle tracker uh, and Morgan um, is sort of the left-hand side here. So he's two away from winning at this point. Um, so we've just pulled Kraken. We're going to probably have a, a shot into these Mandalorian Super Commandos and then use Tactical Network um, to, of course, try and finish off the um, uh, the job here, depending on how well um, Kraken rolls. So let's see what we end up doing. We have used Do Not Let Them Escape on the Magna Guard. Uh, one got to clear a pin, which is this uh, Magna Guard right here. Uh, and then one got to do a dash, which is this Magna Guard uh, right there. So that is what we're looking at. And we're still just making our mind up uh, in terms of what the best activation order to do here is. I would say that you'd probably want to do a shot and then you'd probably want to just do a, um, a move uh, to use this ingress point and sit on the objective. So we'll see what we end up deciding to do here. I don't think shooting anyone else is the right play. Um, Let's see. Yeah, we're shooting into the Mandalorians. Uh, great roll, absolutely phenomenal roll. So you actually might not even need any support from the Tactical Network there. Um, so that will be a full tree on Kraken and then Tactical Network can be used elsewhere maybe to influence the board um, uh, You know, against maybe something like Obi-Wan Kenobi and softening him up or putting some conditions out elsewhere. So let's see, we need six damage to wound these Mandalorian Super Commandos. Um, so we can't get a free tactical network, essentially. It has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so we have to go full tree and it has to be um, skipping the tactical network, which is fine. We can use tactical network uh, manually or we don't even need to use it here, I'd say. Um, you just want to shove and get your, get, your robot, get your robot bum on this point here to take three points. Okay, interesting. We actually shot uh, this character up here instead. Um, so is Maul wounded? Yes, he is. So is that going to be a four-point swing? Oh, wow. Yes, it is. That is strong because Kalani is here. Uh, I Sorry, guys. I totally missed that. So yeah, Kalani is up here. We've just wounded the Mandalorian Super Commandos. Lord Maul is also wounded, and we're going to be able to do an advance action um, straight over the top here to put, um, put our put Kraken uh, down on this point. And that is a four point swing for Evil Houdini. So that's uh, that's big. That is very big. And this is where we wanna keep um, our, um, our Django uh, FET in to reserve here so we can try and influence as many objectives as possible. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening. Big swing, big swing. We'll see how Morgan responds. Right, so we are using a force for a tactical network. Excuse me, we're using a force for a tactical network here, maybe just on the B2s to try and get them into a better position. And we are having a little bit of trouble with the TTS mod, so Morgan's just trying to help out um, with the placement here. Yeah, so I think what we're doing is trying just clogging up the lanes with uh, the B2 battle droids. Um, and you know, you, you will still be able to put Maul sort of in this area, just in front of the B2 battle droids here, uh, but it does sort of force him to the left-hand side instead, making it a little bit more tricky to have a crack at um, Kalani. Uh, and we are just rolling some dice into Django here as well. So we've got, uh, looks like one damage and one critical. So it'll be two damage total and a shove onto Django. Uh, so he'll just be 
pushed back a little bit, um, nothing major. He won't be able to be pushed off the point or anything, uh, but it does sort of get him a little bit more distance away from Kalani. So there's a less influence on this point. But keep in mind guys that we do know the next card in Morgan's order deck is the Shatter Point. So he's got the choice between Maul probably uh, and Django. And Maul is of course right here. So Maul is a good shout. And there's the advance from Kraken. And that will be a four point swing plus a momentum. So that's a really big turn uh, for Evil Houdini there. That's exactly what he needed. Getting a full tree there was uh, was pretty lucky. Um, but there is of course, um, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. It's not a four point swing. It's a three point swing because Obi-Wan still controls this. All right, I lied. Uh, but it is still a good turn for Evil Houdini. So he's got a momentum, got three points there, which is probably what he needed, um, and rested control of two objectives. Uh, this is, of course, now the priority, which means that it will be more being pulled by the Shatter Point, I would say, um, because Django doesn't have a really easy turn or time getting over there. Um, so yeah, I would say that we go for the Django play here, sorry, the, uh, the Maul play and see what happens. Um, that'll put us uh, one away from victory for Morgan um, after an inevitable wound onto Kalani uh, and taking this priority objective because Morgan will now own this one and this one. So I would say we pull more and then we can use Django to sort of influence the board in other places. And we're just deciding what to do it seems. This has been a really good game, you know, the, the struggle one was over in 19 minutes, um, so it was a very, very quick struggle one, and a really tight, um, hotly contested struggle two, uh, and this has been a nice back and forth struggle three, so this is exactly the type of shadow point game we want to see, um, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, uh, this match. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this match. So I think... Yeah, this is this is problematic for Evil Houdini here because even if we get say three points plus a momentum, um, if Houdini gets uh, three points back, it'll put Morgan on the three track here um, after a momentum, um, and that will make it quite easy for Morgan to win it in the uh, the the turn following Evil Houdini's. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. So Morgan's still deciding probably to go for the Maul Shatter Point here. Yeah, there we go. Maul Shatter Point, um, maybe try and pull. You could even maybe pull Kraken off this point, but it's probably a little bit too much to ask. You just want to uh, probably just go uh, go Hell for Leather into this, uh, this Kalani here, uh, up here. They've only got um, four health left, so yeah, that is pretty good. That is pretty good. So I'm not sure what we're measuring for here. We probably maybe just a, a movement because we are engaged with um, with Kalani. Maybe thinking about a ranged attack, maybe or something similar. We'll see what we're. Yeah, we're doing a move. Uh, this is from the Force Speed. Uh, then we're going to pull Kalani off the objective, just in the um, the chance that we don't actually wound Kalani, which is smart. We want to guarantee the fact that we take this objective back. Um, and of course we can, even though we're engaged, we can take this ingress point, um, for, um, the move up on, um, up on Maul's turn, even if we don't manage to wound Kalani, but it's always good guys to, to ensure yourself against, uh, the, the, the variants, um, and make sure that we can, of course, try and, um, and, and get this objective back, uh, even if we don't wound Kalani. So we've seen a, a force speed. Uh, we've then seen a there is no place to run. So Maul has just taken five damage, I'm sure. Um, there, well, he's going to take five damage um, from a force speed, I'm sure. And then we'll see a lightsaber throw into Kalani. Um, so that will probably get the wound as well, I would say. Um, but we might have actually spent the force again. We've had a bit of TTS bug, so I'm not entirely sure whether or not um, uh, We've spent force or we have taken damage there guys and here's the lightsaber throw from Maul into Kalani She is exposed uh, And this is a decent roll. Uh, so I think it's uh, four strikes one crit and a damage uh, Into three blocks is pretty good. So this is exactly why uh, Morgan went for the anti variance roll uh, and put all the resources into uh, of course getting Kalani off the objective just in case um, So I'm not entirely sure how many successes we've ended up with on Maul. I'll see his expertise tree 
uh, yeah, so it's four successes, four strikes and one critical. Um, so it's just going to be two successes, which is actually going to be enough to wound Kalani regardless. So there you go. Uh, good bit of uh, good bit of variance from from the from the Kalani player, but uh, Maul is quite consistent with his damage output, um, even not in melee. Yep, so there's the uh, there's the three points. There's the wound off of Kalani as well. And we will see what we get. We've got the B2s to go. Uh, and we've also got the um, uh, B2s and we've got one. Yeah, just B2s. B2s in the bag and Cad Bane. So that's basically what we're deciding on going with. Let's have a think. What do we rather? We'll see the priority first and see what uh, what has the biggest influence. Um, so it is going to remain the Darth Maul objective, which probably means we want to go with uh, Cad Bane. Um, but even if uh, even if uh, even if uh, the Cad Bane player decides to use, how about you step aside? I'd probably bet money on the fact that um, Maul won't uh, use. Um, he'll basically just take the expose and the strain and and won't. Uh, won't decide to step aside indeed, um, but we are going with the B2 battle droids, okay. So the B2s, we've got one, two here, so they could indeed uh, have a crack at Maul and they've got a pretty good chance of getting a lot of damage in there. Um, so this is a not so fast roll off of Django for three damage into the B2 battle droids, it seems. Uh, and we've got enough force to use saturation fire on one of the uh, one of the B2s. So we probably want to do a move first, um, and then we will uh, just do two shots into Darth Maul. And we're probably trying to go for some shoves uh, or just raw damage output. So we need, Maul is on two damage. So we need nine damage to go through here. Um, and they don't, yeah, this is the problem with the B2s. They, they're really good at chip damage, but if they're going into Maul without any expose shenanigans or something like that, it can be pretty difficult for them to get damage through because Maul has a fantastic expertise tree here. Um, so we'll see how we decide to go. I'm not sure if there's anything that uh, can be done by Evil Houdini to wrest control of this game back. Um, we do have... Yeah, so basically, we're, yeah, we really need to get Maul off of this point. Um, and that is the, trub the trouble. We've got no ability for uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi to use mind tricks, so we could come over here and stand on this point, but that will guarantee Morgan the win next turn. So really, um, we actually just need to get super lucky here. Um, I don't know how we do it. I think... I think this might be game, unfortunately. Um, so we've done a climb action with this B2 battle droid to go into combat, interestingly enough. And we're gonna see this B2 battle droid do a move. Uh, and then we're probably gonna have some saturation fires and um, some punching. So we'll see if the first B2 battle droid can, of course, um, get more unengaged with this B2 battle droid that's currently engaged um, with some saturation fires, etc. cetera. Um, I haven't seen any force being spent yet. Um, seven dice, so no saturation fire here. That's a beautiful roll. I mean, what else can you ask for? Um, so we've got four blocks from Maul, three crits and a damage for um, the B2 battle droid. So what can we get out of that? Three crits, so that's double shove. That's exactly what uh, we needed there. So double shoving um, Maul off of the point, and then we can have the other B2 battle droid that's, that's currently engaged with Maul try and finish him off, uh, I guess. So we'll see. The first shove's not going to get him off, but the second shove surely will. Um, the reason that it won't be able to get him off is because of this ladder, but the second shove, of course, will get him off. And how many points of damage? So we need four more damage into Maul to get the wound, and that's definitely possible um, with uh, a B2. Definitely possible. Okay, and we followed up here with the B2. And we will do another shot. All right, here we go. Yep, so no saturation fire being spent, just doing another roll. Um, pretty good. So that's, I think, exactly what we need. Um, so two successes on the B2s 
is three damage. Uh, and then the one uh, expertise is the one more damage that we need. So Maul is going to get wounded. Which is good for the B2 player, for Evil Houdini. Um, and we will see what ends up happening. So that's going to be three point swing. Both players are going to gain a momentum. Uh, Evil Houdini will be on two momentum. Um, and this is, yeah, this is down to the wire, really. Down to the wire, indeed. Um, so um, Cad Bane is uh, going to maybe add some damage there. I don't think he needs to because that's going to wound the B2s no matter what. Um, and yeah, we've taken the point. So that is a wounded Darth Maul. Um, I guess one thing that um, you could do is just sort of spend force. Uh, you could stop early in your tree. You could just do one success on the B2s um, for one damage plus the expertise damage for two, and then you could add two from Cad Bane. But for a force, you, you net one force back. But I think um, just don't muck around and take the wound. Uh, and then, yeah, you follow up with the B2s just to try and make it a little bit harder to come up on this point. Um, and you end up, uh, yeah, with this point, scoring three, both players will gain a momentum. And if Morgan can get uh, basically the priority objective off of Evil Houdini, he will score the, the, the victory here. So it's, uh, it's down to where the priority rolls um, and how, how much influence Django can exert on the board. Okay, it's close. So Morgan is going to have to get three points and a momentum here. So that's going to be it's going to be tight. Let's have a look. Oh, so yeah, we ended up stopping in the tree and then doing the Cad Bane trigger for a net uh, ability of uh, two force here. So Morgan is going to have to, I believe, wound Kalani, sorry, wound Kraken, uh, and um, and take this point. And Django is the man to do it, I believe. So here we go. Not mucking around. We're pulling Django out of reserve. Um, we need to do five damage or six damage total to uh, Kraken. Um, and I think we... I, I don't know if we decide to go in and roll extra dice at him uh, in combat or if we decide to just shoot. So basically what we need to do with... Um, we could pull Kraken first and try and get him off the objective. That might be the best way to do it because um, then he doesn't have protection and steadfast, which means that the first three successes from Django will indeed um, get the wound on Kraken. Um, but we'll have to see what we what we decide to do. Yeah, so Morgan's just measuring for the, um, the capture wire here. So that's exactly what's happening. So we're going to do a move, capture wire, and then hope for three successes into Kraken um, because he won't have protection and steadfast, which I think is a really good play. Because um, if Morgan doesn't get this objective back, um, it's close. Yeah, if Morgan only gets two or one point here, then it's basically a guaranteed win for Evil Houdini. So this needs to all end up absolutely correctly, I would say. It uh, doesn't look like Mor um, Django can get off in one hit here. Oh, he might be able to end up in the edge, but it's close. I think Morgan might have to just do a um, a full advance, unfortunately. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty close. It's going to be a really yeah close, uh, nice end to the game. It's uh, very good. All right. So I don't know if Morgan will be able to fit here. I think we have to come off uh, the the edge. Um, but we could get lucky and get a full tree. So, <laughs> All right, so we've decided to go there. That looks like it's hanging off the edge. Unless they're treating this whole building as a silhouette. Mm. They must be treating the whole, like that overlap there as the silhouette as well. D depends on what the players have agreed on. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and we're doing a shot and that will be the three successes. I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's a wounded Kraken. And that is the game for Morgan. So a lot rode on that roll there. Um, four expertise is two blocks. Um, three expertise on Django is two criticals so what have we ended up with we've ended up with three successes three criticals and yeah so that's four successes and that's exactly what we need for kraken and that my friends is i believe good game to morgan so we'll just see if uh i've done the math correct here just see if i've done the math correct here so four successes on django will be one two three four five six seven damage and that should surely be enough to wound Kraken 
So we're doing a jump off of the top tree here. So the, the sort of uh, the third success on the top. Um, and then we're probably doing a shove, which we can't use, but we might be able to shove ourselves off the building. I'm just waiting for the math to be done. Oh, we've definitely done a jump, right? So yeah, we've definitely gone up the top. Definitely gone up the top. Don't want to preemptively <laughs> give, uh, don't want to preemptively give the win to Morgan in case something's happened in terms of auto activation control or the way that the, the combat trees have worked. Um, I think what we've done is probably jumped Django down here. Uh, so then the, um, the ability of Dooku for the brave but foolish uh, won't be able to sort of get Django out of the action here um, because no, yeah, that's right. So there's the wound on Kraken, um, surely. Okay, guys, so I'll just try and explain what just happened. So we've had um, four successes go through with Django. Uh, we've gone, let me get you a better angle here. Four successes. We've gone the first tile, the second tile, and the top third tile. Um, and Django's jumped down here. Uh, and then he's done, you know, the remaining tile to Kraken, which will do a shove, but that's actually not going to push Kraken off the point. Uh, and then the reason that Morgan's decided to land in this uh, area here is to prevent um, a retaliatory attack from the Magna Guard um, to push uh, to, to push Django back off the point uh, once he decides to jump down. Um, so that's a really smart play. And then a force is just being spent um, from Django to jump back down on the point. Uh, and that will be the GG. So very well played from both players. Um, a blitzer, a mozza of a, of a struggle one, a 19 minute struggle one, um, a, a really, really close struggle two, uh, and a really, really close struggle three. So I'll just update the the cards here. So now you guys can see if you've just tuned in, uh, we've just had the, the second and final struggle, um, or the two out of three struggle being won by Morgan. Uh, and that will be a win from Morgan. Uh, and he will be uh, four and zip uh, at the end of this. And good luck to Evil Houdini for the rest of the league. Um, there is, of course, the chance for him to go um, X and one. Uh, so he can make the uh, the sort of X and one elimination round to still get invited to the end of year championship. So good work from both players. Uh, good game. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the stream and we'll see you next time. So all the best. Bye.